This is the Holy Grail WordPress site speed course. I'm John and I'll be your instructor for this whole deal. So um, I'm glad you're here. Just wanted to give you a primer on what you're getting into in this course. This will be a short video, but all the details, all of the ins and outs of the Holy Grail configuration are going to be uh, revealed to you in coming videos. So uh, just so you know what we're getting into here, um, we want to, from the outset, make sure that we have appropriate expectations when it comes to making our websites faster. Because while it is entirely possible to strip your site down to bare bones and have it screaming fast, it may end up negatively impacting the actual user experience of interacting with your website. Um, you could end up removing functionality that is actually needed for a particular use case. So we just want to respect the fact that there is a difference between a website being as fast as possible versus it being fast enough to get the job done. Um, yes, I think any website that we work on in WordPress, we can more than likely get you well under three seconds and ideally closer to one second or less. But I'm just here to tell you from the get-go, that's not always going to be possible for every use case out there. So I'm telling you that from the very start. Um, even though most sites can be made faster than they already are, um, it's important to keep in mind that any optimizations that you make do come at a cost. So it's worth considering you know, if your website um, actually has the, um, the kind of performance budget that would actually be suited for you know loading in one second or less so yeah again let me hear you let me just say it one more time for for everybody in the back not every site can be made to load in one second or less so uh, yes even though this entire course is based on um, my blog post about getting your site to load in one second or less i'm telling you it's not going to work for every single use case so um, if you want to have the fastest website in the world you pretty much have to figure out how to do without stuff. So um, it, it is just a matter of fact that the fastest sites out there have you know, as little going on as possible, whether that is you know, we're not loading up any fonts, maybe we're just using system fonts on the site, maybe we are not using many images at all, and even those that are on the site, you know, maybe they are smaller. Um, you know, we're doing without a lot of functionality. Um, it, it's just a matter of fact. The fastest sites will generally have the least going on because as you add more features and functionality, you're going to end up with a site that makes more requests and it's just going to slow things down. So um, important to know, any of the fastest sites you've ever come across, they generally um, are pretty stripped down and they're just not doing a ton, which is what lets them load as quickly as they do. So. Um, it's worth considering uh, what your website's performance budget is. And there's a great resource, I'm linking to that here below this lesson, but there's a blog post by WP Rocket, and it really does a great job, I think, of defining this idea of performance budget. Um, there are going to be some websites out there that might need to have full width images, multiple full width images, you know, that are, you know, 1920 pixels across, you know, multiples of those all the way down a page, or maybe you're running Google ads on a site, or maybe there are um, some third party resources that um, have to be loaded as render blocking resources. So it's not something that can be delayed. And it's just um, something that you have to live with, it's going to slow down the page. But um, if that fits within your overall performance budget, you know, if you can afford for your website to load in two seconds instead of one second or less and you know, et cetera. Um, it's, it's worth considering what that budget is gonna be for you. So um, yeah, from the get go, keep in mind, you know, is this performance um, ideal that you have in your mind, hey, I want my website to load in, you know, half a second or less, um, is that appropriate for your goals? Is it even possible, you know, for the number of, say, the number of plugins that you're wanting to run that will have some functionality on the front end, you know, if you know that you plan on bringing a lot to the front end of the website, 
Um, is that realistic considering the fact that, well, the more stuff we put in on the front end of the site, that is probably going to slow things down. So um, is this goal appropriate for what you're trying to accomplish or is it more so wishful thinking more than anything? So um, basically what you get at in this course is there are three main ways that I like to look at um, improving website speeds. So uh, we can minimize the number of requests. So um, again, every asset, every um, little thing that you load on a web page um, is a request. It's an HTTP request um, where you are telling a server somewhere, hey, I need this thing to make this page do what I want it to do or look the way that I want it to look. Um, so minimizing the number of requests is a great way to uh, get your site loading quicker because the fewer things that you are requesting from a server, the faster your pages can load. And again, that falls in line with this idea of the fastest sites out there generally have the least amount going on. So um, that falls right in line with that recommendation. Um, beyond that, once we have our number of requests where we want those to be, we can start looking at optimizing our assets, whether that is um, using a CDN, uh, making sure you're on great hosting, uh, deferring all your JavaScript to the footer, um, aside from things like jQuery that may need to actually load in the head because it is a dependency for some other things. Um, yeah, we can optimize the assets that we are loading on the page. And then we can do some per page fine tuning. So rather than, you know, site wide saying, hey, disable this plugin everywhere or disable this script or this bit of CSS everywhere, um, that could potentially limit our functionality or break things on pages where we would rather, you know, we might want to exclude something from, you know, four out of the five pages on our website. Uh, but what do we do if we want it to actually work on that one? Um, you know, there is some per page fine tuning that can be done and uh, we'll get into that as well. Um, so those three things are really the core of improving site speed and we get into all of those in the course. So um, we'll get into those nitty gritty details and before we dive on into the rest of the lessons in the course, um, I just want to knock out a little myth busting. Um, it is definitely a myth that having a lot of plugins on your website um, you know, makes your site slower, all right? Uh, so my main website, matchlessweb.com, um, I'm not kidding, there are 50, I wanna say there, there might be 55 at the moment, 55 or so plugins on that website, but the site loads pretty dang close to one second or less worldwide. So uh, what's going on there? Well, it's, uh, you know, not every plugin actually does something on the front end of the site where the end user is going to, um, you know, be affected by that. There are a great deal of, uh, a great number of plugins I have on my site that really only do uh, serve any kind of functionality uh, for a logged in admin user. So um, I'll show you some of those plugins toward the end of the course, but um, there are several things that I keep installed that are just helpful for the back end of the site that are, um, I feel like they improve my workflow and just help me navigate around the admin faster and more efficiently. So yeah, I've got a lot of plugins on that site, but um, again, the front end is uh, far leaner than what you see in the back end. So um, it is it is not the case that having, you know, as few plugins as possible, um, like, oh, like, as if that is the secret to making your site faster. Um, it's partially true. There's a grain of truth in there, but it is an incomplete recommendation, again, because not all plugins load things on the front end of the site. And even if they do, you could per page have some things disabled to where you're not being negatively impacted from a performance standpoint just because you have a large number of plugins. So um, as with everything, uh, context matters. So yes, as a blanket statement, you could say you need to have as few plugins as possible. Um, and I see where it comes from, but again, it's incomplete um, as a recommendation. So um, that is just one of the myths that we will um, kind of be busting in more detail as we get into the course. Uh, but for now, that's enough to get us jumped off here. We're going to dive in soon to our first lesson. Just wanted to give you a primer on what you're getting into for this course. So again, I'm John. Let me know if you have any questions starting out here in the course and along the way. 
uh, feel free to reach out to me and I will get you steered in the correct direction as you work your way through the course content. Good luck.